What's up, everyone? Welcome to The Monthly. Uh, I'm Thomas Harrington with Revere. This is a new project I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, basically, it's going to be a monthly show where we talk about real estate news and events in the YEG uh, with me as my sometimes co-host, maybe permanent co-host, <laughs> who knows, Josh Blaze, our broker and owner here How's it going? Uh, at Revere. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, so what I wanted to accomplish with this show is a few things. First and foremost, with any video content I do, I want to actually be useful and interesting to you if you're someone looking at real estate, not just reading boring statistics from last month or whatever, even though we will do that later in the show, but it'll be <laughs> fun, I promise. Uh, answer viewer questions. So we actually have some questions today. And uh, if you're uh, watching this and you have questions about real estate, please don't hesitate to reach out um, in the DMs or whatever. We'll talk about that again. Cool things to do in the city. Uh, there's always lots of events going on. And obviously, uh, you know, we got to make the most of things perhaps uh, this year in this coming winter month. So uh, keep you informed of some cool stuff going on. And there's lots of awesome stuff going on that uh, not everyone knows about quick market stats that won't bore you to tears so if someone asks how's the market you can answer that question uh news relevant to those in real estate or interested in real estate so a couple quick news headlines and then uh we're going to close the show with a good tip or piece of uh advice so uh yeah anyways uh cool man stoked you want to talk? Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> uh, so first we're going to start with questions. So these are real live questions from humans that have been asked to me, Josh, uh, uh, across our various social media channels. Mm -hmm. um, hit us in the DMs and then every month we're going to send out some prompts to get those questions uh, and then we'll answer them on here. We're going to keep it relatively anonymous. We're not going to give your home address or anything when we answer them. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, just so you know, and please don't be shy. So um First question is, uh, what's the minimum down payment on a home? Uh, and are you able to get approved easily once you have that minimum? That question comes from Tyler. Thank you, Tyler. Nice. Want to start that one off. Sure. Yeah, I guess the minimum you would need is 5% down, right? Right. Um, and I mean, it totally depends on what mortgage company you're going with and everything for pre-approvals and such. But obviously, pre-approvals are not approvals. Mm -hmm. We can obviously get into that too. Um, but yeah, I've seen 5% seems to be the standard and there's stuff that you can do out of your RRSP that, uh, I mean, can help you afford a house too, if you've been investing since, you know, childhood or whatever. So. Right, right. Definitely. Yeah. So, I mean, the short answer is, uh, 5% is the minimum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, some people, I think there's a bit of a misnomer out there that it's higher, but no, it's 5%. Yep. Uh, and yeah, I mean, there, there's... There's no maximum. You could play, pay for a cash too. Play for a house cash too if you want. Oh yeah, if you're a baller, you could pay 100% cash if you wanted to. But yeah, <laughs> I don't see it too much. But um, do you also want to talk a little bit about mortgage uh, insurance and everything too? Um, probably not today. I think that'll okay. be that's a bit beyond the scope okay. uh, of today's conversation. But um, yeah, and I'll. Uh, might bring in some mortgage people to talk more specifically about that. But, nice. Uh, yeah, long and short of it is a, it is a 5% down. Now, the second part of this question is actually a really good question is, are you able to get approved easily once you have that minimum? Uh, I really like this question. Um, essentially, like once you have the minimum down payment, will the bank be like, okay, you can have a mortgage now? Okay. Uh, and the answer is uh, not exactly. In right. fact, not really. Um, it, they actually care more about your credit worthiness, which is more about your monthly payments and monthly debt liabilities. Mm -hmm. So even if you're someone who has the down payment uh, or has well above the down payment, but you're, uh, let's say you have a ton of monthly liabilities, it'll actually be quite hard to get uh, pre-approved. Conversely, if you're someone who just barely has the down payment, assuming you have it for the minimum 90 days, perhaps you're getting it gifted, but your credit is really great. You don't have a lot of debt or you've done a good job paying your debt. You'd actually be easier to get approved, uh, in that situation. So, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you want to expand on that, but basically it, the banks actually care. And we can also disclaimer, what we can answer is limited as realtors it's yeah, more for like because we're not mortgage professionals exactly. yeah. so so we can give kind of a surface level answer we'll hopefully do a follow-up episode with some more in-depth on this mm -hmm. but uh once it, lenders basically care more about your monthly debt obligations when compared to your uh monthly liabilities 
uh, that that's their biggest criteria. Mm-hmm. So. Most definitely. Yeah. Do you remember what the percentage is that they're looking for these days? Is it like 38, 40? Um, it's been decreased a little bit. I know that. I think it's like 36 and 42 or something okay. for your GDS and TDS. Um, that's a little beyond the scope of this video. We'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll get you to, uh, if you have more questions about that, DM us that we'll uh, put you in touch with our mortgage broker. Yeah. Okay, uh, moving on. So would you, uh, this question comes from Jessica, would you be able to help us if we wanted to buy something newer or brand new from a builder? Good question. I, as a realtor, personally love this question because uh, people are unsure if you can use a realtor when you're working with a builder. uh, And it's a really great opportunity for me to, uh, well, talk about (laughs) in our totally unbiased opinions as realtors here. Uh, You want me to start this one? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can absolutely use a realtor and you probably should for that because in that scenario, a builder doesn't really have your interests in mind, right? Like they're obviously selling the home and I mean, they're not working for you. They're working for them, right? Mm-hmm. So if you have somebody that's on your side negotiating and, you know, keeping your interest top of mind that could probably help you out. Yeah, no, that that's well said. I mean, yeah, we should uh, ask that question, then look in, straight in the camera and be like, <laughs> yes. But um, yeah, just to expand on what Josh said. So, um, and then, the, you know, when this person asked me this, I did actually answer it in, in person too. And, nice. you know, she was quite relieved just to know because she's like, okay, good, because I would have no idea what I was doing walking into a show home. Yep. And, you know, one thing I want to say is that we as realtors, we work... F- for you, we work with your best interests in mind mm-hmm. um, when we're helping you buy a home. So uh, when it comes to working with builders, well, the thing to understand is the people in the show home, they're not bad people, but they do work for the builder. The builder signs their checks at the end of the day, and they have a th- their obligation is to move units for that builder versus mm-hmm. what we do is actually more of a matchmaker kind of service if you want to compare it to anything mm-hmm. where we're taking your needs and then bringing you to the right homes you know, for, for you. Right. So, um, and then I find just speaking in anecdotes is as soon as we, as a realtor step into the show home with a client, it immediately alleviates so much pressure Mm -hmm. because the, uh, you know, this, uh, the, the, the salesperson knows you're represented. So they're kind of giving you a little more space literally and figuratively. Yeah. Right. They know you have someone working for you. So. And I mean, it's tough to negotiate on, you know, it's a Mm $400,000 purchase, right? So a lot of people having that second opinion just to help you out with it, that's that's valuable to a lot of people as well. I mean, you've done new sales before too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Lots of it. Yeah. Oh, and on that note, I should say that it is uh, entirely free, just like any buyer's agent services. It is free to you. It's no extra out of out of pocket cost. Um, and then just like when you're buying a resale home, the seller pays all the fees. Uh, same goes for any new build or new construction home. The builder does all the fees and all the builders are very happy to work with realtors. They know they're a resource for a lot of clients. Uh, literally every builder is part of yeah. that builder realtor coalition or whatever, whatever it's called. Most definitely. So, uh, no real worries there. And I would definitely recommend it. I actually have some videos on my, uh, YouTube and Facebook that will be out by the time this video is out talking about, um, just some FAQs about working with builders and realtors and cool. stuff like that. So nice. Uh, this is our last question for uh, this kind of freestyle period. So um, this was a really interesting one too, which I liked. It comes from Ben. Thank you, Ben. Uh, do all or almost all Edmonton townhomes have condo fees? Oh, interesting question. Um, I'm not going to say all, uh, but condos because of how they sit like your one unit and you have a neighbor's unit next door. There's shared spaces that you are probably going to be taken care of together, like your roof, your um, sidewalks, maybe just common areas. So it's probably pretty common. I mean, I have seen town homes without them, but I would say it's more often than not. What would you say? Yeah. So uh, yeah, I thought this was a really good question and it just kind of clicked to me where like, because people may have no idea or yeah. not, right? And then yeah. I think uh, without boring everyone to tears, um, 
because condo, the word condominium means common property ownership, right? Mm-hmm. So any situation where you have common property ownership, it's a condominium. But a lot of people, when you say condo, think of like high rise apartment. Buildings, oh yeah, right. Definitely. So yeah. Uh, but basically, when it comes to townhomes, to answer this question specifically, I'd say the vast majority do have condo fees, mm-hmm. um, especially older ones or in any. And that's even like mid two thousands, twenty tens even. Mm-hmm. Uh, now what we're seeing in a lot of new communities is builders uh, and they market them as no condo fee townhomes. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of exclusively um, a new thing, a new idea, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, so you only really see that in new, new communities. So those ones don't have townhomes or don't have townhomes, don't have condo <laughs> fees. Uh, they're basically like a, like a triplex or a fourplex. Um and uh, there's no condo fees there, which is great. Um, there is some downsides for that in the long term, but um, I think I was going to make a video about that spe- separately. We actually, I think we touched on that subject when we did a podcast uh, a little while ago, too. Yes, yes, we did, yeah. which should be out soonish. Check <laughs> well, the link. Yeah, Maybe we'll have not. to talk I to don't her. Know. You'll <laughs> have to follow us on uh, various social medias to get that. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I'd say, like, off the cuff, I'd say assume. 80%, if not a bit more, of townhomes do have condo fees. Mm-hmm. Most townhomes, uh, especially in newer areas or if you're a first-time buyer within the, let's call it first-time buyer price range, mm-hmm. they don't have crazy amount of maintenance fees just because it's really just com- covering like common property, maintenance, common insurance, and then like uh, snow removal and stuff. It, it's not it's not a lot, but most of them do have some condo fee. Yeah, yeah most definitely. And... No, I don't think I had anything else I wanted to add there. I was going to say some duplexes also have condo fees. Mm, so do ask, yeah, do ask yeah. that question because there are complexes of duplexes in the city that are bare land condominiums and there are condo fees associated with them. So ask yeah. that question yeah. when you're looking at duplexes as well. That's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. And although uncommon, there are some homes that appear to be detached homes like a single family <laughs> yep. home but yep. they are part of a condo complex and do have condo fees so it is a good question to ask uh with the detached houses you don't have to worry about it but maybe if you're looking at the area and the, it looks like there's kind of a common like like a complex ga- gated, gated, gated sort of thing yeah. exactly yeah. that's yeah. a really good question to ask mm-hmm. yeah cool Okay, there's our questions. So again, uh, get at us on social media uh, at thomasharrington.ca. We also have at Revere Home. Yep. Uh, I'm assuming your personal uh, at Joshua oh, Blaze, correct? That you is me. Yep. Get on him. Uh, message Josh there as well. Uh, and then if you like this video, be sure to subscribe. We're going to do these. It'll be like the first week of every month. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we'll do a promo just to send in, send in your questions or you can comment them below, uh, and then we'll add them, uh, next month. Nice. So, okay. So moving on, uh, things to do is something I wanted to talk about. Um, so things to do in November in Edmonton, uh, obviously with winter coming up, we want to, you know, well, do some cool stuff, not just sit yeah. around and watch Netflix all the time. Uh, and we want to be a resource for you for events in the city. So, Okay, uh, also, uh, winter patios, those are a uh, exciting thing because restaurants need to, well, make use of outdoor space and social distancing, right? Yeah. So uh, I think that'll be a really interesting thing uh, this winter that I'm curious to see how it turns out. They say here uh, there's going to be tented patios at Sea Change Brewing as well as Boxer, uh, which are them, and I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a few more of those from breweries around the city. Yeah, even some restaurants on White and stuff. There's, I mean, there's that's yeah. all that space that they don't use in the winter, right? Oh, absolutely. And then, I don't know. I think we might have to get used to sitting down to eat a meal in our uh, winter jackets, perhaps. But it's <laughs> a, it's going to be a very Canadian winter, is what. As I'm long thinking. as it's not minus forty, I don't, I don't see any issue. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Oh, and then uh, Little Brick Cafe, Cafe Bicyclette, uh have. Uh, like I believe they've always done winter patios is my understanding. Yeah, and they this have the... year they're kind of stepping up their game. Uh, again, we got some links down below if you want to check those guys out, all great local companies. Yeah. Um if you don't know where to find them. Uh, there's you know, there, there's a lot of uh nooks and crannies and one-off mom and pop shops in the city that a lot of people don't know about. Yeah. So, uh 
very good for Instagram photos and excellent uh, food, etc. Uh, as well. Okay, and then uh, last on this list here is, uh, and this is something I'm personally excited for and will be checking out heavily, is the, uh, uh, there's a Explore Edmonton Brewery Pass from Explore Edmonton. Uh, that's like a mobile passport. They say here loaded up with discounts to the best breweries in the city. Uh, the, it's actually free. So i uh, going to have a link below to that. And uh, yeah, I mean, something I am extremely passionate about, Josh. Uh, there's lots of excellent breweries in the city. Some you may not be aware of. Uh, and this is a really great way to discover them. Uh, just reading this here, there's a whole bunch of discounts with this card. So that's something to do. You can do your own little uh, brewery tour. That's dope. Edmonton. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, any any local breweries want to sponsor the monthly from Revere Real Estate? We are uh, ears and mouths open. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, what do we got? So, yeah, that's things to do. Uh, market stats. So, getting back to the super serious real estate stuff here. Uh, um, basically, I want to keep it short and sweet. Uh, again, uh, so you could answer this quickly if someone asks you. So, uh, just to kind of read the headline here. So, th- today is November the 4th. So, these are reviewing October's sales for the month. Mm-hmm. So, uh, residential unit sales were up 26.34% compared to October 2019, Mm -hmm. right? And only a 0.2% decrease from September. So, not a huge, huge monthly slowdown. Uh, New listings is up almost 15% from October 2019. Um, Down month over month, 7.5%. Let's see. Uh, Overall inventory fell... uh, 12.5% 12.5% from October of last year. So more stuff is selling. Excuse me. So, uh, and then the biggest gain was seen actually in the single family homes where unit sales are up 38.02% from October 2019 uh, and only a 5% decrease month over month from September of this year. Uh, condo, Conversely, condo units increased 2.37% from October 2019. So, uh, essentially like as we've all, or well, I shouldn't, shouldn't say that, but Edmonton's very much a single family home city for sure. And mm-hmm. that's the market that's seen the biggest gains right now. Yep. Um, essentially what we're seeing here is kind of the same of what we've seen all year where, uh, basically the post quarantine pent up demand is still, uh, going really, really strong. And we have some relative stability, uh, here economically right now. So, um, essentially the overall question is, cause you know, we don't want to be those cheesy realtors saying, Oh, look how great the market is. Hmm. Um, it's just that there's a lot of pent up demand right now and the market is quite active right now. But, uh, the r- real question is going to be how long is this, uh, going to continue on for, or will we see, you know, kind of a slowdown and will that be a sharp drop? Off a cliff sort of thing? Well, the year over year thing is interesting to me because that's really indicative of where things are going. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you were saying that there's just been a slight drop in listing inventory, um, but there's just more stuff selling. That's that's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. So, so uh, basically now sales are way up. Unit sales are way up. Uh, what we're seeing, and because the month over month was only like marginal, we're seeing a tiny bit of seasonal slowdown. But there's no real indicators that this uh, demand surge and delayed market will totally drop off anytime soon. So yeah, I'd say we're probably going to be looking at a unseasonably busy November, December, and perhaps we'll see what happens in the big term economic picture. And if that kind of slows down and levels out, um, I was going to say, let's look at like next month. Let's mm-hmm. see how much the numbers differ from November to yeah. October, because yeah. that's going to be very interesting. That's exactly it. So, yeah. so right now, um, looking back at October's numbers and the current market is, uh, we still have this kind of pent up surge in demand. We'll mm-hmm. see if that lasts even longer. Um, and we'll have a pretty good indication of that next month. Personally, I'd say like, yes. I mean, I would say by December, January, February, we're probably going to be seeing a return to 2019 ish numbers, realistically speaking. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, as for right now, uh, the market is, uh, quite high. Uh, I, 
not to rain on the parade or anything. I just want to be realistic. Like it, it I don't think it's going to come crashing down, but I do think it will return to uh, more normal numbers uh, just from what we saw kind of 2018, 2019 of like yeah. maybe marginal improvements here and there, uh, but overall still kind of like a, a bit of a buyer's market. Um, kind of the Alberta economic struggle we've known the last couple of years, really. Yeah, I think that like looking at the macro trend is that's a lot more helpful than just because this is like a short term thing. Um, I think people are also... The interesting thing for me is that listings are down because people were holding off for a little bit during um, the pandemic and everything to list. So now that listings are starting to come down, that's what I really want to see is November numbers to really say this is the direction things are going. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good, very good point, right? Because we almost have people who are uh, showing up a touch late to the party perhaps Definitely, where... Yeah. Uh, people were unsure about selling. Now news has been out for a while that the market's doing quite well. Mm -hmm. uh, and now people are looking to list. So we might actually have perhaps a, a bit of a significant influx of inventory uh, as well over the holidays. So uh, we're going to come back with some seller tips at the end of this video as well. So mm -hmm. if you're selling, uh, how to succeed. So Yeah. One thing I will say too is that the, the COVID numbers are increasing too. So it's mm. it'll be interesting to see what happens with that if yeah. there's I don't want to say a second shutdown, knock on wood and everything. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that also will play into to everything as well. Th th that's a good point. Um without getting into it. I mean basically if we see a second shutdown, it'll probably do what the last one did, which is push things basically back. <laughs> shut off all sales and yeah. then whenever things open again, it'll be uh, a huge, huge uh, surge again, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So two quick pieces of news, local news we want to bring on. Uh, well, sorry, I should say more news relevant to you if you're someone looking to make a move. So, uh, breaking headline news is that there's a first time buyers webinar coming soon from me. <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll also be teaming up with one of the great mortgage brokers we work with shout out Tatum. Uh, so basically, um, yeah, uh, in the coming weeks, we're doing a first time home buyers webinar. If you're a first time buyer or you just haven't bought in a while, excuse me, uh, doing a first time home buyers webinar. Uh, if you're a first time buyer or if you just haven't bought in a while, uh, we're going to uh, be walking through in very details the entire home buying process. Uh, it's going to be very informative and a little more in depth than you know this video today. Nice. Right? Should answer some more specific questions there. Uh, be sure to uh, follow me on Instagram uh, and sign up below, and uh, we'll keep you posted on that. Uh, so just to get that shameless self plug out of the way, uh, the big news right now is that the Bank of Canada signals low rates until 2023. So I read that the yeah, other day. So basically yeah. what that means is to paint it with very broad strokes, the Bank of Canada rate, uh, determines what rate they lend money to the actual lenders. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the lower that rate, the lower the rate that you receive is. So currently it's at 0.25 of a percent, uh, and many five-year fixed rates are under 2% at various lenders for, uh, yeah, for five-year fixed, which is crazy, crazy low oh, yeah. interest numbers. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's at all kinds of lenders and that's without like crazy promos or anything. So that's really good for buyers. Um, they're going to keep those rates nice and low. So just to essentially what they're doing is trying to simulate the economy and the real estate in Canada. Um, and then for you as a buyer, that's good news because their rates are low, but the rates will be low for, well, <laughs> two, three years. So, uh, you don't have a huge, huge rush. So going back to the first time buyer comment, if you're someone not looking to buy tomorrow, or you're not ready, you know, there's no huge rush cause you should have a pretty damn good rate available to you yeah. when you come ready to buy in the next couple of years. Oh man. Anything sub 3% is bonkers. So yeah. yeah. And, uh, this, uh, does kind of mean that, uh, the bank of Canada is anticipating a slow, uh, economic recovery, slow but steady kind mm. of thing. Uh, but it is good for buyers. You just don't have to worry about rates rising. So I, I would say that's probably the biggest piece of news real estate wise out of this past month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Quick natural pause here. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and like we said, we were going to, uh, end the show just with uh, a few tips for real estate. So, 
Uh, these are tips for how to win in Q4 real estate. So in this last quarter of the year, last couple months here, kind of going into the winter months for buyers and sellers. Uh, so for buyers, the two points I want to make is uh, now, even though it is still a little bit of a buyer's market, as we just saw from the market stats we read, that um, there is a lot selling. There's a lot of activity just from that pent up demand and the best properties are selling quickly. Mm-hmm. Basically, when a property that checks your boxes hits the market, urgency is definitely still a key. Yeah. And you want to jump on it and put an offer as soon as possible before it's too late so you don't hear those dreadful words pending. Because uh, I can tell you right now, when I'm out showing buyers, like we're running into tons of pending properties. Oh, yeah. Especially the best ones, like yeah. the best price, best looking, best renovated. Yep. Uh, you know, they, they do still go quick. Oh yeah. I've been seeing stuff sell, you know, under five days. So yeah, exactly. Which is exactly like so. that's quickly moving. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, you do have time as a buyer, but w- without sounding salesy, you know, there is still some urgency and there are, there is competition out there. Right. Yeah. And we just don't want to be kicking ourselves cause we, uh, weren't, you know, being first to the draw is, uh, well, if you see, key. if you see something you love, write an offer on it, frankly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, another tip that I'm telling people to do is, so yes, there's a lot of great sales or lots of sales activity, I should say, in this market, but there's also a lot of homes that aren't selling. There's lots of homes with yep. high days on market. Yep. Uh, so if you're not seeing something you love, maybe you're hitting frustration, a good place to look is properties with higher days on market, like 80 plus days, because mm-hmm. those ones are probably a little overpriced. Uh, if not very overpriced. Uh, and then, you know, take a look. If it looks like a good property, if it looks like it meets your needs, uh, end up giving, uh, I would recommend giving an offer for what you think it might be worth. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the results might surprise you. Um, with sellers, uh, there may be more motivation than you realize, even though it's an overpriced property. Worst they can say is no. That's exactly. <laughs> I always say that to clients. So. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, now sellers. Okay. So just kind of the, uh, counteractive, uh, I shouldn't say counterpoint, just kind of the, uh, antithesis, I guess, to those last ones. Is, yeah. So for sellers, you know, the best looking and best priced properties sell. That doesn't mean give away the farm, but it means be priced, uh, accurately and thoroughly, mm-hmm. but also stage your property, take the time to make your property look good, prepare it for market. Yeah. Um, I think that's so crucial right now because I see I walk into so many listings and maybe the photos look okay but there's all kinds of nicks and scratches on the walls Mm -hmm. uh it needs a lot of uh elbow grease a lot of extra work yeah I mean simply decluttering is probably your biggest return on investment when it comes to that stuff frankly what if you have you know too much stuff in your house just put it in storage you know make it look clean Mm -hmm. you're only going to be living there for the next you know couple months, hopefully. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, well, and you touched on something good there because, uh, some people, you know, staging costs money. It's not free. Right. right. I'll admit that. Yep. Um, but th- the logic with it is s- homes that are staged well, and whether that's professional staging or just taking the time to declutter, mm-hmm. maybe getting a staging consultation and just putting some excess stuff in storage. Right. Um, those homes sell faster and for more money. So, yes, it's a bit of a pain in the butt to only have to live with 50% of your clothes for, for three months, Mm -hmm. but it's definitely worth your time and money investment. Um, plain, plain and simple, right? Yeah. I would even say if, if your property is vacant and it matches the criteria for staging, that means it's obviously a little bit more of an expensive property. Let's say over 400 Mm -hmm. staging is probably a good choice. Oh, definitely. Uh, it just lets people picture how a room can be used better. Yeah. Yeah, big time. And then also, um, on that note, uh, if you're living in a home, uh, it's quite amazing what a staging consultation can do. Mm. Uh, Plain and simple, some people have an eye for design, so you don't have to spend thousands on new stuff. They can just rearrange what you have currently uh, and just really make your home stand out. Again, uh, let's not just slap your listing on the MLS and hope things go well. Uh, It's, I think, really important to take the time to prepare if you take that one to two weeks to fully prep your listing and we're presenting a pristine, fully finished, best foot forward product to the market, Mm -hmm. right? Most definitely. Uh, And on that note, uh, if you're either 
currently listed or you're thinking about listing and you're either not sure where to price or you want to see what's good, what's bad, it's actually a good idea to uh, go visit listings on the market in person. Like I'm sure you may look at it online, which mm-hmm. is not bad because uh, some sellers don't even do that, frankly. But uh, go and take a look in person and see what's working, what's not working in right. the market, I yeah. think is a really good idea. Oh, most definitely. And and also just see what sold over the past six months too and mm-hmm. just really compare them and be, you have to be really honest with yourself and say, my product compares to this product and these are the pros and cons and mm-hmm. and that's where we come in, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, being honest with yourself is kind of a key su- to succeeding or failing when it comes to selling a home. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I think even what's important to look at is who hasn't sold in the area, right? So if you're either listed, thinking about listed listing, and you see another property that's at like 90 days, mm-hmm. let's go take a look at it so we can figure out what are these sellers doing wrong? And it may become glaringly obvious. Or you know what? Maybe sometimes you walk in and you're like, I guess it's a slow market because this is a nice property and it's priced well. Yeah. Right? But sometimes there's uh, something that's uh, missing. But yeah. Very valid point. Yep. Okay. Um, that's the end of our show. We hope you uh, enjoyed episode numero one of many of the monthly. Yep. This was, that was really fun, actually. I yeah, really, that was I a like good that. time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, trying to keep it short and sweet here. Uh, so, just to recap, uh, every month, uh, and you know, a big part we want to make a big part of the show is the user questions. So, please don't hesitate to ask us questions. Comment below, or if uh, you want a little more privacy or whatever, please DM us. We're very responsive to those. Yep. Um, and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll we'll answer it on here and yeah please uh like share subscribe all that jazz uh where else can people get a hold of you or us uh josh? yeah you can shoot me a message on instagram probably the easiest uh at joshua blaze or uh revere underscore home on instagram um and then obviously yourself through there or i'm sure you'll throw your phone number out on the the internet too <laughs> probably i mean it's out there it's easy to find yeah uh, and then for me you know my handles at my website are thomas yep. look us up uh there will be a bunch of links wherever you're watching this video below for some good downloads some good resources and then also how to get in touch as well so cool. uh yeah thanks for watching and we will see you guys next month you bet